Okay, are you guys ready to talk about some news? Yes. Yay. All right. So I'm Rebecca Gregory. I'm going to be darting out of here because I'm going to go behind the scenes and introduce our special guest. We have Wayne from O&M and the creative director, Janelle Chaplin, on. So welcome, everybody, and I'm going to hand it over. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we all? Janelle, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. Hi, guys. How is everyone? And Janelle is actually the O&M Global Creative Woo Director. I, unfortunately, that bloody Rebecca did not say the right terminology. So, you know, that means she gets paid more money because she's global. Isn't oh. that correct, Janelle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's getting paid money at the moment, are we? <laughs> well, no, not enough. But, you know, because you've got global in front of your name, that's, you know, yeah. money. Mm. And now, can you tell me what you actually do? What's your role and what you actually do um, with the Academy in New York and the Salon? Yeah, so uh, I have worked with the brand for many years. Um, I think I've worked with Josie and Wayne now for like over 11 years. Um, so I help develop all of the new products that come through. Um, and then I do mostly anything to do with the creative. So most images that you would see, would somehow have been created or curated by me. Um, uh, then, you know, the color palettes and all the products, uh, we work very closely with Josie and a design team, you know, to get all the palettes right and the colors that, you know, uh, we all love and know are known for O&M. And then um, I'm based in New York and so I still do hair like one or two days a week. Um, I love doing hair. And I think it's important for me to keep doing that to know, you know, that we need a nude collection that I need to bring out. <laughs> um, and so, and then also we use the Academy, all of my amazing team in America and the Academy are all educators for O&M and they're all fantastic hairstylists. Um, and yeah, so we use the Academy to do shoots or um, we bring people in from all across the globe to do, you know, three and four days in New York seminars on, color and yeah styling we do new york fashion week um i think next year will be my 10th year in uh, new york so yeah i think one of the amazing things with you too janelle is that everybody can actually do classes with you as well because you do host four um sets of education for o and m a year which i think so you know that's an amazing thing to be able to touch base with you and work hands-on with you yeah yeah i think that's the best way isn't it that's how we all learn Look, I like to hands on. Yeah, yeah. Hairdressers, we're, we're visual. We need to touch. We need to see. A, you know, it, I I think that's the key for all of us. Right. And yeah, also, it's great fun working with you. Who would not <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> now we are going to start on nude. So you are going to get or naked or nude with Janelle and I. I hope everybody's ready. Let's kick off. So, five shades. This is the latest collection that we are launching. And this is something that sort of like has been in the process for a while, because what we're trying to do and look at doing is maybe doing something like this a couple of times a year, really releasing sort of like a little collection, a spot collection. And so we've called this our nudes. This is ultimately sort of like creating something which is just a little bit different, something to play with, a new colour palette uh, that we can all sort of really work with. And the nudes, what, what was your thinking, Janelle, with the nudes? So I guess first and foremost with the nudes, I I do do a lot of blonde hair. Um, I don't really know how I got known to doing blonde hair, but you know, I came from Australia and a lot of the blonde hair in Australia, you know, 10 years ago was super ash and everyone had their hair light and as light as they could do it and then just made it super ash over it. So everyone looked kind of borderline sick. <laughs> Yeah. or anemic yeah. or something yep <laughs> and so as I started to progress with my blondes obviously I love doing bronze hair I love beautiful shades of beige I love golden hair and uh, so I always used to do interesting mixes with the tones and then one day actually I was in I mean obviously you know I'd moved from Australia to New York and been here for like 10 years it's super diverse I'm doing much more you know, different melanin and skin tones hair than I ever did before. Um, and so, you know, practicing that and doing little concoctions and formulations for that. And then actually I was mainly inspired by Christian Louboutin because in 2015, I think 
he launched um, a nudes campaign for for shoes, and it was he did like eight tones of nudes for uh, for women's high heels, and you know, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. And then I started to think about all the blonde I did, and I thought, wow, we could we could release a nude palette, which is would be a collective bunch of colors, uh, which are variations of the perfect beige, pretty much. Um, and so, now, yeah, that's how it started. For anybody that doesn't know Christian Louboutin, he's the red soul man. You know, what do they call it? The blood soul. So if you see a red soul, that's a Louboutin. So I think with one of the things with this is that, you know, nudes have been so big in fashion for us. Um, and what we're now really doing is embracing like the diversity of sort of like what a nude is. There's no real true nude, which is why we have five shades, I suppose. Yeah. And I really wanted to be on different levels. So I didn't want to just have, you know, like I do, do, do a lot of hand painting and, you know, we don't take everyone up to a level 10 all the time. Like, you know, we do a lot of bronze hair, which is kind of like brown hair that looks blonde, which, you know, is sits on that level eight um, arena. And yeah. I didn't want to like leave that out. I mean, I probably could have done like 18 shades of nudes, but Josie <laughs> would have killed me. <laughs> so I got five over the line and I'm happy with that. And I think the collection's beautiful. Um, yep. Yeah. And well, the I, I, it looks stunning. So, you know, and the thing is too, like, let's start off with the five shades. We can always increase it to more. Yeah, and I, I do think um, one of the things we might do with O&M moving forward is always release sort of like trend shades. Maybe yep. some of them will stick around, maybe some of them won't, depending on, you know, how, you know, they're received. But I do think it's important to stay with the trends and, and you know, stay with the times and release things that maybe we wouldn't use five years ago. You know what yep. I mean? Well, um, I think there's definitely a call for that. You know, all, all these colours are really designed to complement skin tones and, and not be sort of like just one. Everybody's not fitting into one box now. Right. As usual, with everything we do at O&M, uh, we're 100% ammonia-free, PPD-free, resource not free gluten-free, soy-free, and, of course, cruelty-free and vegan. All of our testing is done on people. We do not do any animal testing. Rebecca, uh, Janelle gets everybody through uh, the academy and through the salon. Mm -hmm. And how many heads would you test all of these on, We test Janelle? everything on Angelo's head. Okay. <laughs> is Angelo on? A Angelo no. is on, so. No. Um, you know, we do, we, yeah, we do a lot of, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of models, do a lot of testing. You know, I think me personally, I can do, you know, anywhere between, uh, like, I think on each shade I can do, personally up to about 30 to 40 just on that one shade and yep. so I think we send them to other specific salons in Australia and uh, yeah it goes through a whole hierarchy before it gets signed off yes. um, and then I work very closely with one of our head colorists in Australia Paul Galea as well and Wayne he has a big input yep. in it so yeah I mean I was really happy with the with the you know, it took about two or three rounds of the testing, I guess, and then I started to be happy with the shades. And then usually the colorist team refine it and then I'll move on to getting all the assets ready and, and you know, designing what we want it to look like at launch and who's going to wear a nude, what kind of imagery we're going to have, all that. So ultimately, and that's, I think, the key. And so what we always try and look at, so like doing within sort of like the O&M family, is we have kept these along the same lines. So we've used the Desert Harvest in every single one of our tints. So that's sort of like us looking after the hair um, and sort of like really considering sort of like how to keep colour in the hair and condition. So, you know, we look at um, ultimately, like we have in all of our range, uh, for over uh, 40,000 years, the Australian sort of like um, Aboriginals have and obviously Janelle and I are both from Australia. So we've looked at sort of like what the traditional food sources are and how they can be beneficial uh, for hair. And everything that we use and we source is all ethically sourced and is also from, you know, reusable and re uh, sustainable as well. So that's the key. Kwandong, and De Kwandong, which is desert peach, and that is a true plant. Now, I know everybody laughs at that one. Desert lime is easy and wattle seed. These are key ingredients that we use in our, which is our particular formula, which is called desert harvest. And then with every activator that we do, 
uh, we use organic uh, macadamia and coconut oil to really condition the hair. And this is something that every activator is not created equally. And that's, I think, a really key thing with everything that we do. It's all about the condition of hair. And I think, Janelle, do you find that sort of like condition of hair really does, it's a big thing in New York, obviously. It's a big thing with most women, but longer hair. Um, do you notice the difference with sort of like different sort of like uh, products that you use? Yeah, um, 100%. I definitely think shine and how soft the hair feels is, you know, an incredible thing. And I guess from the time I've had the salon in New York for like six years, and I guess watching the journey of, you know, some of my um, guests that have come to me, you know, I'm very close. For example, my friend of mine is a nutritionist. When she came to me the first time, you know, she had come from unclean products, um, you know, very, very heavy foils. And actually, I think she's going to do a before and after. Um, if I if she does it, I'll post it on my Instagram as well. But to see her hair journey come in like a year or a year and a half is when you really go, oh, wow, these products are like really different. <laughs> um, it, yeah, so that's been a nice journey to see. Um, and the activators have our signature oil blend, right? It's correct. coconut and macadamia, yep. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's 100% like it's a certified organic product. So it really is in there to do something. We don't just like sprinkle things into our products. What we do is make a point of that everything we put in there does something and everything we take out is also for a reason as well. Okay. Oh, you're, you're already on side six. Sorry. Oh, so, oh, so I'm jumping ahead for you, am I, Janelle? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I can't see the slides for some reason, but anyway, can't I've got them anyway. Oh, good. Oh, you've got it's all good as well. Ultimately, you know, what we always talk about is, you know, like keeping the good hair in good condition, the longevity, detangling, like, you know, looking after some of the hydration, calming the frizz um, and the oxidative stress on scalp. So ultimately, it's all about the condition. That's what we are as a brand, because colour is what every is everything that's the focus of our business to start with, is that ultimately the better the condition of the hair, the more we're actually able to then do for it. So now, Janelle, we are going to the nudes slide. Yes. So with the nudes as well, it's important to remember that it is definitely our core colour. It's the same colour range. It's just reflect and additive and tonal additive that we've made different, which we don't believe other companies have or interesting tones. And that's how we yes. created the nudes. But it is, it is the core colour line. So, you know, the performance is there, the shine. Um, you know, all of that will still be there. It's just we had some fun with the tonal value of them. Now, we're going on to the next slide. So we're going to actually talk about each colour. So 913 is a very light, cool beige blonde. We've got 1013, lightest, cool beige blonde. 971, very light brunette ash blonde. 863, light violet golden blonde. And 10.67, lightest violet brunette blonde. So, Janelle, now so, the fun things. I mean, a big, a big, I have always loved mis mixing an ash and a gold. I've always done that before, previously, um, like manually, where you would have to mix some sort of ash tone and then yep. a gold. So, for me, that was always super exciting. And I didn't feel like we had any higher level ones. And that's how I believe you get the perfect beige. Um, a lot of technical heads might go to differ with me, but whatever. I think it's great. <laughs> um, and it is great. <laughs> well, look, we're hairdressers. We like to create. We like to do our own thing. So that, that's what it all comes down to. Right. So I thought it would be interesting sitting at the higher levels to see a 1-3. It's very different to see a 1-3 sitting at a 9 and a 10 as opposed to like a 4 and a 5. You know, you're going to get a very different yep. result. So... I was super excited about that, um, to see that. And, you know, I do believe it's just so beautiful on the hair. And then I've always been a massive fan of the Dash 7s. So to me, the 7 range in core colour is just an absolute favourite of mine. It's always mixed a lot of the time in, you know, in my darker browns as well. Like, you know, even for like if I was covering grey, but most of my brunettes that I create would have some Dash 7 in them you know, along with like 6.0 or 5.0. Um, so I definitely wanted to have them, see them at a lighter level. I think I think we only got up to eight on them. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And then 
you know, we didn't want it to be like super, super pinky. We wanted it to be more on the base. So adding the ash helped, you know, just yep. create and bring that alive. Um, and then the eight six, uh, yeah, the eight six three is is the brond, which is like, yep. you know, the colors that I was talking about before. That is is still a blonde, but you can look at it as a really light brunette. Um, it's a lot of that beautiful painting that has just kicked the hair like two or three levels from their natural, and you're not aggressively lightening. It's just like that sun kissed vibe. Yep. Um, I think it's a massive trend now. It's also one of my favorite colors. Like I, I have a lot of blonde clientele, but I love actually brunette hair the best. So yep. I love, you know, seeing the interesting tones that you can create because if you can get some side, some beautiful dimension into beautiful brown bases, uh, you know, then you're really achieving something because to photograph brown hair is super hard. Um, because there's no dimension, you know, it's harder to get the dimension. It's harder for it to look great. And so, you know, that's always where I've known I want this to be good. Like when you can look at a brown that's been correctly coloured and, and it can be photographed well. Does that make sense? 100. Look, I hate yeah. anything where they just throw a whole lot of red in it. Oh, look, you notice a difference, but it's not pretty. It looks just, it, it looks yeah. very ordinary. And I then think when you look, go on, sorry. Yeah, and then you're super at, you know, you're super at risk to creating something too orange. You're super, super at risk to creating something too stripy because your brown, the darker shadow is so dark. So yep. it is super hard to get the perfect bronze and to get the perfect amount of dimension in here. So um, I love that. I mean, I can tell that that's already going to be out of stock in my salon <laughs> if we ever, ever have allowed to open a salon again. I'm, I was like worried the other day. I was like, oh, my God, I wonder if I could do hair anymore. You'll, you know, you'll be able to do it. Don't do worry about it. Diapers. <laughs> do not worry. Diaper changer. Yeah. yeah, motherhood is not easy. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, I was a working mum. When did this happen that I had to actually be the mum? <laughs> <laughs> not fun at all. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I wanted to like let everybody know, and, and the key to this, is that all of these colours can be turned up or turned down. You know, you can mix them with other things. You can put the, you can, um, you know, turn them down by adding sort of like a clear gloss through there. You know, some of our clear, the 0.0. .0. You can adjust the intensity as well by mixing them with sort of like any of our pure colours as well. So these are super intermixable. They can be, you know, changed around. You can really sort of like customise them. And I think that's, you know, part of what you do brilliantly Janelle is you customize all these colors for people yeah and I think like with the 1067 and even like the 863 I you know I can you know see where you do a lot of root shading and then bring the mid lengths out a little bit lighter and then come out and melt out the really light ends would be a beautiful graduation from like you know say like a five or a six at the root to melting through to 863 then an, a 10 six seven around the hairline and around the ends would be stunning yeah like with eight six three you could add sort of like half clear half eight six three and you can really make that in, you know basically a nine six three so you know your palette really does expand a lot by being able to use a lot of the other colors that we have as well yeah and, I think yeah, and even like the naturals like some people would mix like ten o and ten one three you know yep. i mean you could play around with them as well but they have been really designed to you know to, to be able to just grab that tube and use it, which is what, you know, I love because we yep. used to do a lot of the mixing and I just feel like it takes out the, um, yeah, I mean. The guesswork you know, sometimes. Yeah, the yeah. guesswork, exactly. Yeah. Now, if you can all see at the moment, what I've thrown up on screen is where the, the they actually sit on uh, the colour wheel, just so people have an, uh, an idea of sort of like, you know, what you're going to be able to sort of like create and where they're sitting, what the uh, pigments are going to sort of like, you know, give you or take away and add or and or add to the hair. So we've got sort of like, you know, two sitting in the one three series. We've got the 0.63, the 6.7 and the 7.1. So we've really sort of like thought about doing something a little bit interesting. But by seeing it on the colour wheel, it really sort of like gives you more of an idea about what it's going to counteract and what it's going to enhance as well. Perfect, Wayne. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, sometimes, <laughs> Janelle, you you make it so easy for me. Now, and the other thing too is they're permanent colours, they're toning. You can use them for lots of things. A lot of people thought they were just a toning range, but they're not. No, you can actually use them 
So when I started to think about what levels and worked with um, Wayne and Paul, so I am sometimes someone that does, I don't really do a lot of base lifting, but I do do a lot of, if someone say like a level six, I will, or a five, I will use like a level eight with 30 volume, um, you're speaking volumes, right? 30 volume oh, yep. or 9%. Um, and, you know, so I would do that with like 811 or 8819. So I feel like you could achieve that, a really beautiful like lifted brown with 863. Um, and I've actually yep. done that. One of our staff members, Laurie, she has that. Yep. Um, yeah, so they can definitely be used like 90913 could be used on as a single process or um, and then, of course, every kind of toning, you could do stronger toning at a one-to-one -one mix or like, you know, more um, translucent toning at a one-to-two mix. You, can, you really can go wild with them. I think the uh, the level eight mix with eight O is beautiful for sort of like, you yeah. know, getting that grey coverage in there as well. It's just... Yeah. You know, the whole thing is at the moment, there's no, it's all about complementing skin tones. I think we're lucky that now we're past all that. Let's send everybody super flat and ash and make them look like a nana. I think now it's all about really enhancing beauty and, and there's no, there's no right or wrong, but I think yeah, going and there's, to... like, and there's like 49 or something, isn't there? 48 shades of melatonin. melatonin. Um, so why would you just have, you know, yeah, platinum? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got platinum and beige. That's what we've got. <laughs> yeah, that's the. So you know, like with all of our um, products that we're talking about here, depending on what activator you mix, is what your timing is going to be. So if you're mixing it with ten volt, then you'd be looking at sort of like, like processing for like a twenty five minutes. If it's for grey coverage and you're using twenty volt, then you'd be going to like thirty five minutes. You know, for toning, depending on what activator you're using, it can be like eighteen minutes, twenty minutes. It you know, really sort of like you know. Obviously, you know the rules, but everybody wants to break them. I know Janelle would never break the rules. Um, <laughs> of, <laughs> ever, would you, Janelle? No. no, <laughs> no Janelle likes good. to push it. So, you know, ultimately with anything, it's all about what your sort of like activator is, is going to be your timing and how you'd work it from there. And also, I really feel like there's a difference between toning painted hair or highlighted hair than doing like gloss. So, you know, when you're looking at adding a reflect to hair that you have just lightened, obviously you have to consider, you know, how light you've got it and what you're left with. But when you're yep. doing glossing, you know, that can just be picking up three months ago highlights or like um, we'll show you in some of the slides coming forward on one of the models. She was already a brunette and we did a gloss. And every time I do glossing, I would I tend to sort of go for my 10 vol arena. And every yep. time I do... Um, any kind of toning or reflect additive, I like to call it, is definitely after my painting or highlighting. So I get the hair with my um, choice of bleach, you know, like the little Pac-Man, get it to the level I want, then add my reflect. And if I've got it to the right level, my reflect will be killer. Exactly. And that's the whole thing, getting it to the right level. I've just flicked back to sort of like the, the colour wheel again, just so people can get another idea of what, what you're talking, reflect, adding, or, you know, subtracting, whatever you're wanting to do, this is where they sit on the colour wheel. So it really gives you an idea of what you're trying to achieve and what you're going to get from this, whether it's, you know, taking away or adding to it. Now we yes. are going to expose you, Janelle. Your nude oh. is going to be exposed. <laughs> we are going to talk about... I'm not sure you're ready for my nude, Wayne. <laughs> I, I want you to be exposed, Janelle. <laughs> Love you. I'm sure the world's ready for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've been doing your Peloton bike, so you're ready to go. Yeah. After all this, you know, you're going to be ready to, you know, hit the streets. I've also been eating a lot of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> a girl's got to live. So, exposed. Let's move on to our sun-kissed beige blonde. Okay, so that's slide 13, right? It is. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, so she's so stunning. Her hair was so stunning. Uh, she's actually a regular guest of, we do a lot of the model. We have a few contracts with some of the modeling agents. So some of the girls that I that I chose for this count already were guests of ours. So she was one of them. Um, Nicolette, and she's amazing, really super lovely girl, super beautiful hair. She has been hand painted. She's actually regularly hand painted by Stephanie. Um, I think I've done her one or two times if I've needed to for a shoot or if Stephanie's been gallivanting around the world. 
Um, so she does. <laughs> yeah. So she was like lightly painted, like hairline, face frame painting, and then she was add added a my re reflex additive, and we just did straight ten one three. Um, and I believe we would have used a one point five percent, which is five volt. Yeah, which is yeah, which is a semi activator. One to two or one to one and a half? What have you used there? Or one? Uh, one? I think we would have done a one to two there to keep because um, her hair was pretty light. But we probably did leave it for like twenty five minutes, twenty minutes. Um, okay. I yeah, I mean, sometimes I really need to do that hairdresser thing where where you go look at it and you think it's ready and then you just walk away for 10 more minutes because I am very quick to get off my toner yep, <laughs> or my reflex additive. But most of the time I have got it to the right level, but I do feel that these work better when, you, when you're at the 15 to 20 mark. It's a bit of a similar thing to the pastels, but you know, I always rinse it off too early. It's just who I am. <laughs> No, I, I, I think that's the thing. Look, as hairdressers, some of us like to get it on and off quickly. Some of us don't let it. And I think the key with the nudes is you just get so much more out of them by just letting it yeah. go with that little bit longer and just, yeah, like, you know, I mean, waiting. When you check it and you think it's ready, leave it another five minutes. That's the golden rule for hairdressing, isn't it? Exactly. Like, when you think it's ready, leave it for five minutes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's not going to go bad. You know, if anything, you're actually going to create a more beautiful colour and a longer lasting colour. Right. One of the questions I was asked is about, you know, lift with the nudes. So, you know, you, you're not going to get a high lift out of the nudes. Even if you use them with a 40 volt, it is only going to lift. Yeah, there's no 12 series there. There's no 12 no. series there. So they're not built to lift the hair and get your three to five shades of lift. But you definitely, you know, you will get the two, I would say two to two to three shades of lift. But, you know, then it's, you'll create the warmth. So you have to be careful in your colour choice. Um, exactly. But you know, you know they're not the high lift series. It's a different series. Yeah. Know what know what you're looking at trying to achieve, and then go for it because you know they are they've got lots of sort of like different ways to be used. Now we're going to model of slide fourteen our earthy blonde. Yeah, this is actually the blonde. Um, blonde. Yep. Yeah. So so this is my favourite sort of. So she does have super super fine like baby lights in her hair, only lifted like one or two shades lighter actually. I don't even think I, I said that, but they were old. So, you know, you can see she doesn't have them coming from the root. You can see it there on the left-hand side coming through. This is my favourite brown to photograph because it really has, it's easy to bring up the um, the pop and, and see, yep. you know, how that, and also it's been amazingly styled by one of my, um, I think I had Jason Chong, who is one of our stylists uh he was lead on hair that day and um yep. i look after the um sorry one second art direction for on yep. the shoots but this is uh, my favorite brown or bronze it is the perfect bronze so we just did a gloss on her um at, with 863 for 20 minutes and i mean it was super shiny it was my favourite. It was just so beautiful. And actually, we've got some nudes videos. I don't know where they went, on what channels they went on you, but Stephanie does do um, the 863 where she lightens the hair first and does a bronze, and that technique is really awesome. So I don't know. I think you have those videos as well. I don't know where they went, Wayne, but maybe you could um, tell them where to go to look at that because they're really cool, those um, technical videos. I don't know if they're up yet or... I think they're floating around. If they're not up yet, they will be up. So okay, can we cool. just jump one back, Janelle? Um, mm -hmm. We just wanted to know what level or what the lightness was or the level that you lifted um, the girl, the sun-kissed um, 10 one to. Yeah, so as you can see that she is, Nicolette, I think she uh, has a little bit of Scandinavian descent or something. So she is really fair naturally. I would say she's like a level seven, eight, eight really naturally. So her hair was painted and lifted right up. Uh, I think it was it might have even been put under the ultralight heat yep. and it was brought up to like a level 10 or right. closest to it and then taken back down to the one three. Right. You know, so add, you added in the it was like really light. Yes. Yep. It was lifted okay. really light. But she is Thank really you. light. So when you put the paint powder on a level eight, nine or a level eight, you you it's you know what I mean? It's it's gonna go light. Yeah, um, you, you pick it, it up. It's an easy leave. pick up. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes we leave it no heat for 50 minutes or if we put the 
infrared lights will will do it will do it for 25:30. Right, perfect. Thank you. No problem. Now we're going to our next model. So this mm -hmm. is slide 15. Okay, one second. I've lost. Sorry, someone's trying to call me. <laughs> I'm busy. Sorry. It might be your agent. You're busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you do webinars for the rest of the year? <laughs> Um, okay, so, oh, Julia, I love Julia. So she is done by one of my amazing stylists in the salon who does a lot of the creative colour, um, Paprika. She is probably, I think she was scheduled to do some classes this year. She was. But maybe it's going to be next year, but she's amazing. She does a lot of um, really out there creative work but uses all of the O&M tones. So she yep. uses all of our reflect additives, which is incredible I think it's an art to be able to do that and not just go to like your you know what I mean like the other the, brands yeah other that are, brands. the easy go-to's yeah <laughs> yeah so um yeah all those all the typical direct dye type of colors like yeah. that's what I was yeah. trying to say yeah. um yeah so she was lifted and bleached up uh, just on scalp bleach with the keratin lightener um just regularly she she definitely has a very short haircut so it was quite easy to lift and then um, we actually used 913 and 90 on her to create that deep sandy blonde. And the only reason we added the O is probably because it was like fresh scalp bleach. Um, yep. And you know, so we and we would have left that for 20 minutes. Um, yep. And it's, One, that is stunning. That color, yep. I am obsessed with her. Actually, She's well, it has that. It has almost like you know that like a, a fur feel to it. Do you know what I mean? Like that real yeah. like shiny gloss. Yeah. It's a beautiful. It looks really beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I was obsessed. And one, thing, well. one thing I'll say about Paprika is she was actually going to do some on scalp lightning classes. So, you know, that, they may be something at the end of the year, but if anybody gets a chance that does a lot of on scalp lightning, Paprika, that, that's her thing. Like anybody that's, you know, ever seen her work like that, her work is brilliant. And that's what she's going to be hosting classes do. So it's really something to look out for when it does come up a, again. Um, Paprika and the on scalp lightning is just amazing. Yeah, she's great. You're great too, Rebe too Janelle. I keep on <laughs> saying Rebecca. <laughs> it's all right. I see Rebecca, I think, that name. <laughs> um, 16. Slide Our 16. Rose on the – Rose Tattoo. Mm -hmm. Coming now. Sorry. Keep losing the screen. Oh yes, I love this hair. This is so her hair was actually pre-lightened when she came to me. Um, and so I didn't actually want to lighten it anymore. It was probably a little bit lighter than that. And I thought it was too light. And so we took her back down to the 913. So we just glossed all over with the 913. Um, you know, she has a little bit of grays around the front. So we, you know, we let it glow on that. And then obviously the pre-lightened hair. Um, what's her name again? Sassy. Yes, Sassy. that I don't know. She's a, friend, she's a friend of my husband's actually, but she's an amazing model, and uh, yeah, so we loved her hair. There was a few little bits that we had to like get out some older color, but she she mainly came to me like with an really old orangey bleach. That's what she yeah. came to me with, and so then we you know cleaned it up a bit. But I left all of her grey roots and stuff because I thought it was stunning. I mean, she's stunning. It just adds more dimension. It, it really is, you know, a really modern way to sort of like colour hair. You're not right. trying to sort of like take it, like paint the wall white and then colour over the top. You're really working right. with the natural So feel. I think what we did is did like um, my favourite shampoo mix with paint powder and hydrate and um, fireball. We just do that in a light shampoo and then we toned her back all the way over. So that's the, so a cleanse. So you cleanse the hair first and then yes. really went to Fantastic. It looks brilliant. Now, one of the questions I've been asked is some, you know, um, toning ideas for, you know, counteracting yellow and orange or any of these where you would go to counteract sort of like orange and, uh, and yellow, or would you more so look at something else in our range? You definitely could go here and if it's really, really orange, um, you know, like definitely the Nicolette had, Nicolette definitely had, um, she definitely had yellow in her hair when it was yep. lifted. I mean, when hair is lifted, it's raw. It's going to yes. be either yellow or orange. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> so it's got no tone in it, like it's really raw. So 
the 1013 would probably be strong enough if you got it light enough. If not, you could add some like 10 because we know that our bases are quite cool. Um, I would never really intermix these with anything heavier than, heavier than a natural because I feel like they're so heavily toned already. If you need to go to something like a 10 6, then you need to do serious toning work. You know what I mean? So that's, exactly. Yep. It's not what these are meant for. Yeah. 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 Well, that's it. Adding sort of like, you know, a lot of one or anything like that to these is really going to kill them. It, it, it's yeah. going to take away what they're designed to do from there. So, yes. So that does help a lot, Janelle. Thank you. No worries. And lastly, our last yeah. model. Yes. Um, I love well, you... her colour so much. Um, so she, it was, it was really... Oh, well, okay. So, I mean, this is exposed, right? So we're going to get exposed. Should we get exposed? All right. Expose me, Janelle. <laughs> so she's actually wearing a wig. <laughs> so we, so we coloured the wig. Um, she, her wig was super light um, and disgusting colour. So <laughs> we did low lights in it with 703 and 10 vol. And then we used um, 917 over the whole lot as um, a reflect additive once the 703 was already on there. And yeah, it just came, it was on pre-existing light here and it was so stunning. It was like amazing. Yeah, um, and, and the tone on this is amazing. Like it has that sort of like, it, it's not too light, not too dark, but it, it doesn't look like, it certainly looks like real hair. That's the thing, you know, it doesn't look like a wig or anything like that. It looks like what yeah. people want at the moment. Yeah, um, I think we were going to lighten her hair. Like something happened. I think she is an actress or something or or a big model, I think, and we she wanted to get her hair bleached and so we were all set to do it and then she had got a part or she got like a big job or something and she couldn't do it. And so we were still dying to use her, so that's why we did it. And, I mean, she just would have looked so stunning blonde. So yeah. I think she came back like next, like a I think, or maybe she wants to come back after the summer and get it done on her hair. But her hair's a little bit longer, so, but, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is exposed. We, we, so now we, 88 we, people know that I used a wig. <laughs> we have, well, well, I actually know something else funny about the whole wig story. Didn't mm -hmm. one of the wigs go missing? Uh, lots of the wigs go missing. <laughs> Lots of the wigs go missing Look, in that. I place. know whenever Seriously. we do education in there, as soon as there's a wig on display, everybody wants to try it on. Yeah, I know. I, I've lost a lot of wigs. Right. Okay. <laughs> Next, we are going to move on. Show us your nudes. Now, this is not, if I get one nudie picture sent through to me, I will I'll probably have a look at it and freak <laughs> out. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll certainly have a look. So we are doing a competition. So what you have to do is once you get your new nudes package, you can either do the try me or the uh, full collection. You actually sort of like follow the steps. You post your um, nude photo on Instagram. And by nude photo, it is a photo using the nude colours, not a photo of you nude. You can be you with the nude colour naked. That's okay. <laughs> but it can't just be a naked shot of you. Um, would you agree, Janelle, or are you happy for whatever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> show us your nude colour work. <laughs> okay, show us your nude colour work. Okay, perfect. Um, you have to tag us, um, submit your photo and use your hashtag, which is show us your core nudes. So we've, you know, put that in there. Um, tell, talk about what you've actually done, how you've done it and what inspired you. Uh, we want to know the shade formulation and you can enter as many times as you want. Uh, the winner is going to be announced in uh, July and you are going to be winning a Simply Organic uh, Beauty gift card and you will be featured on our website and there will be an interview. Oh, I hope I get to do the blog interview. Um, but you've got to be older than 18. Oh, that's a, is that a horn? That, that's oh, sorry, was... you're in Brooklyn, guys. It is what it is. There's horns. <laughs> they were happy to hear. BK all the way. <laughs> now, the next thing we are going to go through is does anybody have any questions? Hi. Janelle, are there any, do you have any questions to anybody out there? Do you want to ask no. anybody? In the, Okay. Not, well, I can't wait to hear everybody's feedback on the colours and I'm super excited for everybody to try it. Um, I was super proud of this 
project. It was our first global ever launch uh, that happened. And, you know, there was a lot of blood, sweat and tears that went into it from first phase right through until creating the images and then, then you know, rolling out the launch. Um, so we at O&M are super proud of this project and uh, we're all so happy to see everyone love it. And yeah, I can't wait. And also do it at the same time. That was amazing for us to get everything all on board and we're all, you know, perfectly aligned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jennifer had a quick question in regards to, um, is a gloss formula uh, one to two? Is you can do form? you can do Gen one to two. I usually do one to two um, because I don't want it to go too dense over painting. So that's why I like it to be one to two. But if I'm doing like heavier toning work or something that requires like on the bronze, I would do like a one to one. So it just sure. depends on each um, category. But generally, I like to you know, I've just put all this work in painting. I don't want to just like cover it all up. Yep. Um, I hate hair that looks overtoned. So yeah, one to two is, is generally what I go with. But you know, there is definitely a place for one to one and I just come up with that as case by case. Yep, 100%. And then another question we had, are the nudes going to give a better blonde result in the root with less gold at the roots? So I can answer that one. So that, and that's from Cindy. So Cindy, no, they're not designed to sort of like, you know, cancel um, uh, gold at the roots or anything like that. What they're meant to do is really work with natural hair tone. They will reduce some of the, the gold, but a lot of when you look at the actual shades that we've got through there, um, they're not sort of like all designed to sort of like reduce gold. They're, they're meant to really work with sort of like, what the hair naturally is and enhance. So depending on what hair type, what shade you're working with, um, but as as much as you know, reducing less gold at the roots, no, they're not really designed to to reduce gold. You know, you you'd be looking at more our violets, more our sort of like our ashes and things like that. Um, yeah, the one ones is yeah. really good on a root smudge. Yeah. That, that's what they're going to sort of like, you know, be able to do. So, you know, this is something that we've introduced and we really would love, you know, your feedback, you know, with some emails and things like that. Just let us know how you found them. When you start to work with them, when we're all back and, you know, really working sort of like uh, full on in the salons again, we'd really love to hear sort of like, you know, your thoughts on all of these. Uh, a few more questions. Um, I have a lot of, and this is from, um, oh, sorry, I've answered that. Um, do you use gloss for adding shine to hair or do you mean colour? So when you're talking about glossing, Janelle, is that where you talk about toning or is it true like, you know, just a sheerer colour than a tone? Yeah, so I think that when I speak about glossing, um, I kind of mean it more dense really, like like the 863 over the brown for like 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Yep. Like really for really old colour that needs glossing and then so I would sort of say that a reflect additive or a tone is more lighter so it's yes. probably the wrong way around to be honest but that's how, in my head so that's, um, yep. yeah that, that was the um, question for that I, I generally do some form of glossing or toning after every single service that my client has so whether she is painted whether she just has a single process to cover the greys um, or whether I do, you know, baby lights with painting and then, you know, she has grey. It, it would always be refreshed somehow, even if it ends up just being a clear. Right. Yep. When you tone, does it affect the natural base colour? And this is from Rachel. Uh, I don't think it will unless you have like, unless you're dealing with a level nine and above. So, or like, you know, level nine and ten. So you can see Nicolette, she didn't have any problems with her with her yep. base colour and she's like a level eight. But you know, if you've got some, you know, like really Scandinavian hair or really super fine hair, you know, you should definitely do one to two. And, you know, I think any colour yep. is gonna do that on fine exactly. light hair. That's know, know your hair type and really do yeah. your assessment beforehand. That's gonna make the difference. Um, Charlotte has asked, can you use mannequin models uh, for the competition? Charlotte, you know what? Of course you can. At these times, we don't know when everybody's going to be back to set. We don't even know if you're going to be able to get a model. So if you've got a mannequin at home, go for it. Use it. It's all about hair and creating yes. beautiful hair. So, you know, we're happy yeah, to see all about being creative. Like these are, yeah, have fun. Um, Frank has asked, is O&M... Uh, <laughs> 
put it. Well, look, if you can convince your cat to have the colour, more power to you. Um, but you may have to get them to sign a, a, a waiver first. A release form. <laughs> yeah, a release form, yeah. Put their paw down. Uh, Frank, Frank has sent us a question. Is O&M Brown blue or blended base? You, get, so, you want me to answer that, Wayne, or are you going to? Oh, I would love you to answer it if you can answer it. Repeat the question again. Is O&M Brown blue or blended base? I mean, I don't understand what that question is. Okay, I, then I will take over that okay. one. So um, our, our brown, the pardon, is a blend, exactly. Our, our yeah. browns are sort of like blended with uh, red, yellow and blue. Uh, when we're talking about our brunettes. talking about the Dash 7s, the brunettes. Okay, got it. I thought you were talking about the base shades. And it's a him, it's a Frank. Oh, Frank, sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, right. I can't uh, see the questions, to be fair. Oh, okay. That's um, right. So how would you answer that, Janelle? Uh, no, it's definitely a blend. There's no, it's not blue, base. No, no. Yeah. Our, our bases sit sort of like, all have a, sort of like a, a cool underlying pigment, but when you're talking about our brunettes, they're definitely sort of like mixed with red, yellow, blue, and, and sitting in different levels and sort of like creating different sort of mixes in our brunette range. Yeah, definitely not like a hardcore blue, which some brunettes are. Yes. Now, here's a question from Joy. Um, hi, Joy. If it's Hi, a permanent colour, but using it like a gloss with one to two and a low volume developer when the client comes back, is it hard to lift through it like a typical permanent shade? Like if you wanted to go back in and like highlight after it? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, no, no. I mean, our colours are not aggressive. It's like every other shade in the range. It would perform like that. Um, you know, you could do that with every shade in the range. Um, so yeah i i wouldn't say that it would be hard right Wayne? no i yeah. i think it's easy. super easy to remove like if you're using the products and you give it the right amount of timing you know you, you can lift color out with you know a, a low volume um like a, a bleach or something like that right. no oh, problem at all yeah. yeah so the thing is it's just slow and steady will get you there that's the trick you're not going to get it out with a shampoo because our colors are not you know it, it, yeah we don't use think, like ppd so we don't have any heavy dye pigments that are really aggressive that just make the hair super dense that's exactly. the stuff that stains in the wrong place and you can't yep. remove but Keep nothing in the core color up. range will be like that no yeah. exactly uh now here's a question from kelly uh the swatches hi, of kelly. the 9.71 and 10 she's saying hi back to i'm sure she will uh 10.67 and 863 look blushy do they look blush over non-pigmented hair versus hair with more yellow do they so, look blush? Do they look true to swatch or is it because they're over? Um... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, it's like the whole swatches. I mean, they 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 do look a bit over exaggerated on the swatches, but I think our whole colour book does. I think every colour book in the world does. Um, yes. But I know what you mean by that now. Yeah, no, they are. I would say they're not as blushy as what you see them on the swatch, but they are pretty beige and and you know true to more what you're seeing on the heads of hair there yes. um but it's so it's so hard to do swatches you know i think we did an amazing job with the swatches with the with this round of uh yep. you you got the little ones that you pop in right to the core color Correct. Yep. book yeah yep. so i think we did a pretty but but you know i hate swatch charts <laughs> <laughs> they never look like what they're meant to so i no, rather look they don't on someone's head I always yeah. get my client to look at a celebrity or look at someone on their iPhone or like I never show the swatch book to my guest. Never give that to your guest. Not no, I that. hate that too. That's my belief because once they see that, that's all they see. And they, I you hope know, that's there's helped, no... Kelly. I know what you mean. It just looks a little yeah. bit more exaggerated on the swatch, but they come out true beautiful beiges in a different array of levels on yeah. hair. Look on the colour wheel as well. That's going to give you an indication of where the underlying pigment sits and that's, and that's going to help as well. It does all depend on how light, you know, some of that hair there was super light that I coloured. Some of it was not light at all. Um, you know, with Julia, I knew I had to add the natural in there. Like you, you just got to assess each case by case. Yep, um, 100%. Yeah. Now, here's a good question. Which levels are these colours recommended for? And this is from Calis Casalida. 
I'm not really good with, I'm so bad with names, you know that, Janelle, sorry. So, which colours are, which uh, levels are these colours recommended for? I mean, I would recommend them for all levels. Um, yep. But, I mean, obviously, you, there's no point <laughs> using it on a level two. But yeah. if you, the only reason I would use it on a darker level, if I was doing that thing where I was making them like a brunette brown. So, for example, yes. if I was going to use like an 863 and 30 volume on a seven or a six yep. level base, yep. you know what I mean? It's going gonna, it's gonna to lighten her up, but not too much and give it a nice tone. Like we colour Laurie's hair with the eight, with yep. the eight six, um, three. So ultimately working like they're, they're recommended you can do a lot with them but ultimately working sort of like a shade to two up or down well obviously with the tens it's harder but sort of like yes. yeah yeah you can't go too far away because but otherwise remembering you're gonna... if you yeah totally like you can definitely use a 10 on a nine level um but you know if you're only lighting to the hair to a level eight the level 10 is not going to tone it enough no. So you're going to have to go to a level nine, add some eight, or reline the hair until it gets to the right level. Yep. So I would say one or maximum two level drop, but you're in danger zone when you're getting to the two level. I yes. hope that helps. Was it Cassie or who was it? What was the question? Who? Casalita. Casalita. You know I'm really bad with names. Casalita. <laughs> Thank now, you for another... your question. I hope that helped. It helps a lot, Janelle. Now, something uh, I've been asked about are the collections. So we've got the full nude collection, which is three of every shade. And then you also get Conquer Blonde, three of Conquer Blonde shampoo, Conquer Blonde mask. Uh, then you also get back bar sizing, um, the swatch books. And that's our, the full nude collection, if you want to go full nude. And then if the Try Me is one of everything uh, with the swatch chart as well. So we have both of those available. Uh, you can go full nude or you can just go try me. Now, if anybody, oh, sorry, they won't let me <laughs> jump the page. All right, that's a bit bad. Uh, so tomorrow, Janelle and I are going to be doing an Instagram live at 2 p.m. If you want to see what Janelle looks like or what I look like, uh, we are going to be live tomorrow at 2 o'clock and we are going to be going through more of the nudes um, everything to do with nudes and just to, a, a, a chit chat about everything uh, to do with sort of like the, the colouring of the nudes and how we got to them. A lot of what we did today, but maybe a little bit more fun tomorrow, a little bit less technical, a bit more fun tomorrow. Are you up for a bit more fun tomorrow, Janelle? Sure. <laughs> or not. You can <laughs> no. have a drink tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Yay. Yeah, I can't wait for the Insta Live tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit about the technical videos that we did attached to them and we can play them behind us when we're talking. Um, and, yeah, well, that'll be good. We'll do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, if we've got no more questions, Janelle and I are going to sign off. Um, Janelle, any so last much. words? No, thank you guys so much. It was so fun to spend the hour with you. At least I didn't have to talk to my husband for an hour. <laughs> which is great. <laughs> now oh, I'll go God. back. <laughs> but thank you so much. I hope everyone's safe and well and can't wait to see some of your nudes. We hope to see you tomorrow. We look out for your nudes. Stay nude and see you all tomorrow. Thanks, Janelle. Bye. Bye. Bye.